Hello, Grace Church. <laughs> he does this all the time. <laughs> Welcome to Grace Church Online today. We're so thankful that you're here with us today. I am standing with my best friend, <laughs> Pastor Keith Sistrunk, and I'm so thankful to be here with him today. It is a beautiful day in the city of Houston. It's a beautiful day in the kingdom of God to yes. be in his presence. And let me just tell you, sat in first service, the message today from Pastor Scott, leading into just an incredible time of worship yes. and baptism. Over 20 people. Yes, is going to change your day. So yes. just get ready. Yes. Welcome, Grace family. So good. To, I guess we can't see them so they can see us. Can see them? Okay, yeah. So thank you for being here. Hey, listen. It is, as Pastor Blake had said, a wonderful day. It's a powerful day already. Lives have been changed. And so you can participate in that by inviting someone to watch with you. Go ahead and have a watch party starting now. <laughs> I think that'll be a good thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you can, they can invite. Just, just call somebody and yeah. tell them to get on. You know, it, we say it every Sunday or use, almost every Sunday. Somebody's going to pop into your head. You just might think, I'll just brush it off. But. Right. Don't brush it off. You know, you never know what uh, message someone needs to hear. And it is an incredible message about gauges mm -hmm. and paying attention to the gauges yes. in our life today. So that you don't drift off yep. course. And so, again, with inviting your crew to watch with you. Also, if you have any questions, right there on the bottom of the screen, or more like here, uh, you can... <laughs> You can send your questions to us online at grace.one. Please do that. You can praise the Lord with us. Yes. By. Praise <laughs> the Lord with us. You can send some hallelujahs. You can send. <laughs> I am so blessed right now because our dear sister Sharika is giving us direction. And she's, he, she wants to know why we can't stay focused. It's because she's <laughs> over there playing charades while we're trying to do what we got to do. Hold her out. I, know, <laughs> I sure did. Under the bus. Change the oil and the tires. No, but just thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm telling you what, God has something special for you. So, again, if you have any questions, please email us at online at grace.org. Yes, and you can also participate live in the service today. We have some great hosts there to uh -huh. answer questions, right? Is it the doctor? It is. Roxanne Henry. Roxanne Henry Whoa. is helping us lead today. And throughout the service, if you have any questions or if you want prayer or somebody to agree with you, you can request prayer at any time and uh, we'll agree with you, uh, whatever you might have. So it's it's great to be ha to have the opportunity to be interactive, right? Yes. In an environment where you might not be able to come to service today, but mm -hmm. you can join us online and you can join your family mm -hmm. online as well. Yeah. You know, and we can give. We're going to worship in a few moments here at the Umpel campus. We're going to just praise the Lord, either dance or just like Pastor, he'll do the moonwalk. But even at home, you could be a part of that. I can do that when they can't see my feet moving. <laughs> As we worship the Lord in bringing our tithes and offerings, please remember that whenever you put God first, you never come in second. And he has promised to take care of you as you choose to be a great steward in the kingdom of God. So there's a moment in the chat where you can just click right there and do your business as it relates to your giving. Yep, absolutely. So there is so much going on, mm -hmm. so much that has happened in the last month. We talked about it last service where you just feel like it's just all-star event after all-star event. Yep. And so we just rolled through VBS at two of our campuses. Yes. We just ended our youth camp this past yeah, Friday, right. it might sound like I'm hoarse because I went to youth camp. <laughs> it's not. But my kids did. Yes. And it was so encouraging to ask them when I picked them up from the church, you know, what was the the best thing that happened to you, youth camp? Mm. What was your favorite part of youth camp? And just to hear them each have, uh, they enjoyed all the games. They enjoyed all the fun. They enjoyed all the friendship. <laughs> yeah. But they also remembered key points from the messages yeah. and uh, all the stuff that was talked about as far as the Holy Ghost goes and all the good stuff that our kids need to be learning about in a world where uh, they don't always get the opportunity to talk about. But. No, they don't. And, you know, I don't know if you had this when you were growing up. You know, our all we had in, when I was growing up in church was Sunday school. And that was cool. But now, with everything that they have available to them, it is a blessing. And so our youngest daughter, Kayla, she, she was working. She was singing with the team. So we're just so thankful that they have this opportunity and this camp to go and just not only be blessed themselves, but to enrich the lives of others. So it's a, it's a, it's a great thing. It is. And we do. So we just ended youth camp. 
Yes. And now we're about to roll into two more vacation Bible schools That's at right. our Tomball campus and our Garden Oaks campus. So if you haven't had the chance to participate, whether it's volunteering or actually going and taking kids, yep. you know, nephews, nieces, grandchildren, whatever it is, you have the opportunity. You can go to our website right now and figure out those dates. They both fall in the last week of July. Mm. So if you haven't had that chance, or if you did, and you yeah. just want to go again because you hey. think they need a double That's a double right. portion. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. We won't be mad at you no, at all. I'm going to know. Uh, <laughs> but there's so much that you can get involved with here. Just like yesterday, we had a serve day. We did. That's because we value going and making a difference. And at each of our campuses, our leaders and our volunteers, they made a difference at schools, at personal homes of some of our older saints. Just an amazing day. Yeah. A lot of people were blessed. They were. So I'm, I remember I went to an elementary school here in the Humble area, yes. and we did some outdoor beautification. We planted some gardens. Yeah. We redid some flower beds. We moved too much mulch <laughs> from one side of the building to the other side of the building. But I saw you, you, you had a T-shirt on that was showing your guns. So I, I got it. I got it. Yeah, that, that was part of the T-shirt. You were out there modeling. That's what that was. But So that was an incredible time. There were probably over 100 people out there yes. at the elementary school I was a part of. Uh, but, Pastor Keith, I know you went to another You went to another school downtown. Yes. Caraway. Uh, Caraway Elementary. And then you went to our cemetery that we, yes. take, we uh, help keep beautiful in the city of Humble. Absolutely powerful. It's um, Again, it's just very touching for me because that place when I first went, 2005, was just grown over. But to see it now manicured and then to see the people, all those red shirts, yeah. <laughs> those wonderful people wearing red shirts, loving, smiling while they're working. I mean, it was such unity that you could sense. And then also the honor that was shown yeah. to those, those, those loved ones that were buried there. Just a, just a great time. Absolutely. So we, we do participate every year in Serve Day, which was yes. this past Saturday. But there are opportunities if you want mm -hmm. more information about how to stay involved. We have an incredible missions and dream center department yeah. that keeps us engaged in the community throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So if you want more, more information about that, just email that address at the bottom online at grace.one and we will get that information to you, how you can stay involved or how you can give. If maybe you can't yeah. serve, maybe you can't physically you can serve, give towards the effort. but you can give or pray yeah. to see that those things are continued. How, they, how can they get connected? Because I know that we have a connect card too, right? We do. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right now in the chat box, a link will pop up. If you'll click that link, it'll give us just a little information about you to keep you uh, integrated in what Grace Church is doing yes. and uh, keep you connected. Yeah, and you can hear the people in the background. You can hear people being excited, lifting up their voices. Also, you can hear the blenders. We're right here close <laughs> to the cafe, and it's kind of hard to be here. We'll take two, Mr. Yeah, Rastos, please. Take two. Uh, but just there's so much going on here. The Word of God that's happening. People are being blessed. You're here with us, so <laughs> we're blessed. And I'm telling you, this message is going to absolutely bless your life. And today, two special things happening today, right? So during our worship, we have Communion Sunday. Yes. So make sure if you're at home, no matter where you're at, get ready for that. Get your sacraments ready. Get ready to participate in the yeah. middle of worship. But then directly following the service today. Baptism. Baptism Sunday. <laughs> That's right. So you still have time. Yeah. You can make it here before we do baptism. Yes. Uh, you have probably about 40 minutes when you get least, here to make sure. Least. 40, 45 minutes. Make sure you're here if you want to do that. If not, just help us celebrate with those that are making that life-changing decision today. Yeah, we, I remember the young lady we had one morning who got out of the baptism world. She came up there. She walked up in the line with a walker. And when she came out, they were trying to give her the walker again. Yeah. And she said, no, I don't need it. Oh, man. So healings have been happening even Amen. as a result of people going into baptism water. Amen. So we're just a little over 30 seconds from going live into worship today. So gather your family, your friends. Yeah. Take one more second and invite somebody to serve us today. Yeah. Remember, God loves you. Grace Church loves you. Mm. We both can't wait to see you again and greet you at these front doors. Yeah. Be blessed. And the production team loves you behind the scenes. Hey, y'all, love you. Sharika is here. She made it back from the Netherlands. Yes. So she's here telling us what to do. We love you all. Come on and worship with us. Let's go have some church.
to worship with us? Come on, let's take a moment with hands lifted, with hearts lifted, and just invite the presence of God in this place. Father, we honor you today. We know you're already here with us. Father, we ask that you would put our hearts in tune with yours. Move in a fresh way today. Open the eyes of our heart that we would see you. God, bless this service today. Let everything be done for your glory. And let the church say in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's worship together. That has ever overcome your light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. You've already won. Come on, let's sing it together.
you testify with us? I'll never forget. Oh no. What he's done. Never forget. I'll never forget what he's done. of Jesus and all he has done for me my soul cries out hallelujah praise God for saving me amen in this moment of worship we're going to partake of the communion sacraments together if you received that when you came in if you want to go ahead and get that ready if you did not receive that please raise your hand and the one team is in the aisles to make sure that you get that you can partake of together with us. So just keep your hand lifted and be sure to get to you. If you're watching online and participating in service with us online, we invite you to grab what you have. Just grab some juice, some crackers, just something to partake in this holy moment with us. Church scripture says just that whenever we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. So today we're gonna stop and remember what he's done. His death, burial, and resurrection and everything that means for us. If you've grown up in church, you still need it. If this is your first time in the house of God, everything is available to you. His grace, his mercy, his salvation, his forgiveness. If you'll peel back that first layer, this wafer, represents Christ's body that was broken, that took on all of our sin for us. If you break it and take it. Thank you for taking it all on. Thank you that your body was bruised and broken in our place peel back the next layer. The juice represents the blood that was poured out. And this blood that was poured out is for the forgiveness of sin. So that when we take on Christ, he no longer sees us or past anything past shame or sin. He only sees his blood. So we give thanks today and remember that. Will you take of the juice? And church, in this holy moment, just with hearts surrendered, with hearts grateful, if you can, from your own lips, just begin to offer up thanks. Thank you for standing in my place. He who knew no sin became sin. And scripture said that he did it once and for all. So we give you thanks today, Father. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son. We can never say thank you enough, God, but we stand in this moment 
grateful, grateful for mercy that's new every morning. When you took your last breath, the veil was torn and now nothing can separate us from your love. He did it once and for all, but he did it for you. Somebody say, he did it for me. Thank you, Jesus. So together as a church family, what can we else do but offer up praise? Father, thank you for the sacrifice of your son. Thank you for what this means for us going forward. It's not just life, but life abundantly. Holy are you, Lord. Worthy is your name.
the beautiful thing is that we don't just worship him because of what he's done. We worship him because of what he's going to do. We don't just worship him out of remembrance. We worship him because of his return. Our king is alive today and he is moving in this house right now. Come on, let's just raise our hands and receive him in this moment. We receive you, Jesus. We receive you, Holy Spirit. Despite any circumstances, my hardest days, my best days, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. How beautiful is it that we get to serve a God and walk with a God who when we're angry or confused, he'd rather us chew him out than ever turn our face from him. He is a loving Father, a loving God, and no matter what you're going through, He is worthy of every breath of praise that is within you. So one more time, let's lift Him up. Let me hear this church sing His name. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. We've got an amazing message in store for you. God is moving in this house. So let's stay in this posture of a open heart and just ready to receive what God has for each and every one of us. And before we go into that though, I wanna encourage everyone here, we do something here at Grace called family time. And that's where we say hi to someone new or that we didn't come to church with. And I encourage you, let's take a few minutes just to do that right now. Well, good morning, Grace Church. I said good morning, Grace Church. There we go. I get it, I get it. I'm jet lagged from youth camp. So we're all a little delirious. Hope you'll have some patience with us. But it was an amazing experience. Also, with BBS, you can tell that Grace Church, we're a next-gen church. And so a big announcement that I have for y'all is that August 7th, we're celebrating back to school. We're gonna pray for our students. We're gonna pray for our teachers, our faculty, because we're a church that supports our school systems. Amen? My name is Spencer. I'm part of the team here. We're so glad that you could join us today. In fact, I'd like to extend a huge welcome to our first-time guests and visitors. Come on, let's welcome them. If this is your first time at Grace, we are so excited to meet you, get connected with you. You can raise your hand right now to fill out a Connect card, or you could scan the QR code on the screen and get plugged in. Also online, hit the, hit, the, hit the button, comment, show us that you're new and that you're wanting to be a part. We would love for you to get planted here at Grace, because a planted life is a fruitful life. And so we want you to be a part of that. And as for everyone else, we've got an exciting thing happening today following service, we have baptisms. So just as we did communion, which I would like to view, I, I, I see that as class reunion, where we come together in, in remembrance of the price that was paid. Baptism is like graduation. It's people being graduated into the body of Christ and making it known to the world. So this could be your day. This very day, I encourage you, we have everything you need from towels to clothing, all of it, so that you can have that public declaration today. And for everybody else, I encourage you, come be a part. Let's welcome our new family members, okay? It's gonna be awesome, and Pastor Scott will walk us through that more, but I'm excited to see that happen. Also, when I mentioned back to school, then following Sunday, all of our students will graduate into their next grade. Just wanna give you that a heads up for kids and for youth. They will all be graduating on August 14th into their new grade, their new classes. And uh, we love our next gen. We're all for the future of grace. And uh, I'm excited, especially being at youth camp, to testify that uh, we've got a lot of young, talented, fired up people ready to do some work for the kingdom. Hey, I also wanna celebrate and thank each of you for your faithfulness in offering and tithe. Thank you for being faithful and generous to the church, to the kingdom, and to what God is doing in Houston. As you've seen, yesterday was Serve Day, and we got to show the community what it's like to be a church that exists beyond its walls. 
where we get to be the hands and feet of Jesus, loving every single person, loving every school, even the cemeteries we showed love to yesterday. And that's because of you. So celebrate yourself. Celebrate the teams that helped us out with survey. Thank you for being a part of that. And as we prepare for giving, you can do that online, in person. Just raise your hand and our ushers will assist you. You can also do it via text. And once again and again and again, I'm going to thank you for being so faithful to God despite any circumstances, being faithful to the church. You are not just a part of a church. You're a part of a movement. And we're tapping into something big this season. Y'all believe that? God's moving in this house, and he wants to move through you. So we are thankful for your giving, thankful for your dedication to church for coming. If you're watching online, I encourage you, make it a plan to come here next Sunday. We want you here. And for everybody else, especially our first-time guests and visitors, come meet us in the guest suite or at the Welcome Center so that we can just help you get plugged in. My name is Spencer. I'm a part of the team here. Glad to talk to each of you. Now, I got a special video about a discipleship program for you to watch. Check it out. Hey, Grace family, I am excited to be here with soon to be Dr. Landon Galloway, our Tomball campus pastor, to talk to you about GLI, Grace Leadership Institute, starting this fall. Yeah, GLI has been great. We've been doing this for a few years now and uh, had a great class last year. Looking forward to more joining us this year. We have a pretty simple goal. We want to help you to develop your character, discover your calling, increase your capacity, and then serve your local church. So if you want to know more about the Bible and about how you've been gifted and how you're designed to fit into God's plan and what it means to learn and to live and to lead at Grace Church, GLI is for you. Yes, we are. We open it to any age. We would love to see some young adults be a part of this, but we'll take gray hair, no hair, doesn't matter what walk of life you're from. If you feel something internal and think God's calling you to something deeper, you want to serve your local church and impact the world, GLI is for you. They are accredited courses that you'll take online as well as gatherings starting September 7 on Wednesday nights as a group being led by Pastor Landon, Spencer, some others are a part of it. It is a stellar program. If you want more information or if you want to register, go to grace.one forward slash GLI. Good morning, Grace. What a beautiful crowd here for 11 a.m. Welcome, welcome. I agree with Pastor Spencer, the associate campus pastor. Sounded good. We're glad to have you. We welcome you. I'm going to tell you, a great way to beat the heat is to come to Grace on a Sunday. Uh, we keep it cold in here. We are not the frozen chosen, but uh, we're just going to beat that heat. So we are glad you're here. We welcome you. Everyone online, we welcome you. Love our online audience. And uh, you have hosts and people that are available to you if you need prayer or anything else, you let us know however we can serve online or in the room. That's what we want to do. And I'm going to tell you, it has been amazing. All that has been taking place yesterday's serve day to everyone. The Texans got something going now. They got the new helmet, uh, the Battle Red, and they've got a game. I think it's in November. They kind of chose a possible win game, and they're going to wear Battle Red. I do, I just, I don't care what they wear, if they just win, that'd be nice, but, but we had Battle Red yesterday. At every campus, an army showed up, men and women in our red serve day t-shirts. It was incredible what happened right here out of Humble. First of all, the old cemetery we, uh, we adopted years ago that was abandoned when segregation hit the uh, city limits of Humble. Uh, needed some TLC, and there was an army out there. Jackfields Elementary, there was an army there. We took care of some shut-ins. We took care of, it was amazing to see the men and women of grace, the young people of grace that showed up for Serve Day yesterday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sure next weekend we'll have a recap uh, video. You'll see all that, but it happened all over the city. Everywhere there's a grace campus, there was a grace Serve Day 
and it makes me humbly proud whenever we do something like that, when we really are the hands and feet of Jesus. Youth camp was amazing. Melanie and I went a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want it just like that in November. Keep it. Keep the steam, the energy, the change you got at youth camp. It was awesome. We went. I like to go. Keeps you young. Smells horrible. Smells like a giant locker room. But it's phenomenal to see almost 500 teenagers lifting up the name of Jesus, going all in. I love it. I want to welcome a very special friend and guest. We love and have had a long-time relationship with the Hooper family, and I'm glad Pastor Daryl Hooper from Covington, Georgia, is here today. Welcome, Pastor. We call him Pastor Hoop. He has preached at Grace, friend of Grace. His son, Jude, the future pastor of the church in Covington, is here. He was one of our interns at camp, so we're glad to have them, and I'm glad to see you. I really am, and I'm talking about you, not the others around you. We are uh, wanting to take the rest of July and just kind of focus our hearts before we begin August and back to school. You know, it was in 2006 that a, a kind of a crossover country group, the Rascal Flats, made a song that had actually been written in 1991, but they made it top the charts. It was actually because of a Pixar movie called Cars, and they sang the song, Life is a Highway. Come on. There you go. I want, yeah. All night long. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Actually written in 91, but it became a hit in 2006. And the fact of the matter is, life is a highway. We're on a journey, a pilgrimage. We're going somewhere. We're, we're, we're trying to get to where God wants us to go from where we started. You can read the Old Testament and see how the people of God are always on the move. We, we follow the cloud. One of the key things when life is a highway is that you learn to pay attention to your gauges. There's a reason why you have a dashboard and it tells you things like how much fuel you have or do not have. I just feel this in the spirit. There are some people here who know how many miles you can go after the light turns on. I am not one of those kind of people. I figure at three quarters of a tank, let's just go ahead my wife, she's, she's an Olympian, and the Olympic sport is, how far can you go on fumes? And she's a gold medalist, dear God. Oil pressure, temperature, all these things are on your gauges. I'll never forget, I don't even remember the, I, I won't forget the event, but I don't remember the year, but somewhere in the 90s, we decided we were going to evangelize and save the world. So we... Uh, we bought a three-quarter ton Ford diesel truck, bought it from a pastor named Rick, and uh, he told me, now we got this thing, uh, not only does it have the fuel tank, but I've added a fuel tank. It's got a custom fuel tank. There's a little toggle switch by the driver's seat, and, and we bought a fifth-wheel trailer. That was going to be our home, and we were going to travel, and we booked all these revivals starting in California. So day one in the big truck, with the fifth wheel, we started at mom and dad's house. We went by and said, here we are. And it was me and Melanie, our little schnauzer buttons. And, and they prayed over us because this is the beginning. Thank God for the nation. The Joneses are here. We're going to save the world. And they prayed over us. And, and we, uh, we've got photos. There are photos somewhere of me and Melanie and buttons outside of our fifth wheel and our big Ford truck. And we prayed. It was a stick. And we left mom and dad's, going to California. We made it to I-10. <laughs> right about where now is Katie Mills Mall. And all of a sudden, the truck just goes, <laughs> dies. I pull over. Of course, I'm on the shoulder, got the flashers going, got this monstrosity of our home behind us. The dog, my wife, were looking, what in the world? And, and we raised the hood, and I looked under it, and the engine was still there. That's, that's all I know to do, you know what I? So I'm like, yeah, no one took the engine. I had no clue. 
So here we are, day one. We're in Katy, on our way to California, won't be long now. And we're calling for service. We had to wait for a while. Somebody had to drive from Bookshire out to us because on Saturday's afternoon, most people have shut down. And finally, a guy came out and he said, well, let me look at it and see what's what. So he spit because that's what good mechanics do. And then he started looking. And, and then he finally, he said, I don't think you have any fuel. And I pointed, I said, the gauge says full. And he said, well, I don't know what to tell you, but there's no fuel in this thing. Then I remembered, <laughs> flip the switch. And what Pastor Rick didn't tell me is only one tank reads on the gauge. So the gauge said full, but we were running on the other tank, which was dry, and we got to pay a serviceman to tell us, you need to flip the switch. Your, your gauges are lying to you. And then we began saving the world. Everybody's got to learn to read their gauges. You, you can run hot. Some of you are running hot and you don't know it. Some of you are about to burn up, burn out, and you, you're not even aware of it. Some of you started strong, but you're going to finish bad if you don't learn to read your gauges. Jesus had a great, he had a lot of mic drop moments. This was a mic drop moment. It's in Matthew 22. Here's how you can tell it was a mic drop. It says, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. Boom, mic drop. The Pharisees got together. So they're thinking, well, he shut up the Sadducees, so let's get them as the Pharisees. So so they went up to them, and one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. The greatest law is to love your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. That's a great commandment, the greatest commandment, but you cannot achieve it if your heart, your soul, or your mind is running empty or if you've got dirty fuel. I, I want to focus on one today. I want to focus on the heart. Turn to somebody and ask them, how's your heart? Yeah, how's your heart? Solomon has something to say about this. He felt it very urgent very, very urgent. Listen to how he starts. Proverbs 4, verse 20, he says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Now, can you, can you see the urgency? I, I hope it's piqued your interest here because uh, notice how he says, hey, hey, pay attention, listen close, don't let what I'm about to say out of your sight, keep it within your heart. It's life, it's health for your whole body. Obviously, what he's about to say is important and he's about to lay down some serious truths, a heavy revy that you're going to live by. So we should be on the edge of our seats saying, all right, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, you're about to hit us with something that you said, pay attention, listen close, hit me with it. What is it? And here he comes, verse 23, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart. Guard your heart because everything flows from your heart. Everything flows. Turn to someone else and tell them, guard your heart. Yeah, yeah, you, you've got to guard your heart. The heart is so important. The heart matters. That's the reason why David prayed a prayer in Psalm 139, and he said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. He said, God, I know you know my thoughts, my decisions, my attitudes, emotions. You know that every bit of that stems from my heart. So search me, God. Do a heart cat 
on my heart. Search me. Check every ventricle, every, every artery. God, look at my heart. Not, not the thing that's bumping and, and coursing blood. God, you know my heart, me, who I really am. Search me and know my heart. And if there's anything that's evil or wrong, God, help me to get rid of it because everything, Solomon said, springs from the heart. Everybody say, guard your heart. What a prayer. What a prayer he prays. God, I, I got to have you help me read the gauge of my heart. It can be challenging because sometimes like us on the side of the road on I-10, the gauge is saying one thing, but your heart's saying something else. The heart can trick you. Jeremiah said it this way in Jeremiah 17, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure, who can understand it? The heart is deceitful. Our hearts can con us. I've, I've, I've pastored long enough to have people say, well, I, I know what the Word says, but in my heart, it just doesn't feel like what I'm doing is wrong. Your heart can deceive you. Y'all good? The heart can deceive you. I know folks that are saying, well, I, 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 I feel like my actions are justified, but I don't feel bad in my heart. Or, or, or that person is worth the risk and compromise because I'm not feeling anything negative in my heart or just the opposite. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel in my heart. Maybe I shouldn't risk anything. So if your heart's lying to you, how do you know you have a heart problem? Because it's telling you we're good, we're close, you can follow me follow your heart follow your heart listen to your heart but if it's deceitful how can we assess the heart and read that gauge Solomon gives us three very simple but very powerful things to do to really know our hearts Proverbs 4 23 remember he said above all else guard your heart because it's the wellspring of life. Then he lays out some gauges. Here's the first gauge. The very first gauge, he says, if you're going to guard your heart, what about your words? The first gauge mentioned is your words. The words that come out of your mouth or out of your thumbs. Words. Proverbs 4.24, right after he said, guard your heart, it's the wellspring of life. He then says, put away perversity from your mouth, keep corrupt talk far from your lips. I want to propose to you this morning, to those of you online and here in the room, if you really want to know what's in your heart, take inventory of your words. What's coming out? What's coming out? Jesus had a lot to say in his red letter edition about our words and how it's tied to our heart. Luke 6, 45, he said, a good person produces good things from the treasury, I love that, from the bank account of their heart. Notice what he says, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Notice what you say flows from what is in your heart. If you want to know what's in someone's heart, listen to their words. My dad, Bishop Jones, he used to say it this way, you know, you be around somebody and they're, I'm a believer. I go to grace. And then you hear them say some stuff. And you can hear something mean or vile or bitter or even just a cursing come out of somebody's mouth. And then the next thing we do is, oh, I don't know where that came from. And Bishop would say, yes, you do. It's the old idea of input, output. If it came out of your mouth, it's because you had let it into your heart. 
Words don't just jump around and say, hey, I think I'm going to dislodge out of your mouth. No, 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 no. You let it in at some point, and out of your heart flows your words. Oh, y'all all quiet in here. You're afraid what word's going to come out now when I... Mm-hmm. James, Jesus' half-brother, talked about this same gauge. He talked about when you open your mouth, we can tell what's actually coming. We, we know the gauge of your heart. He said in James 3, 9, sometimes, talk about this, sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. Don't miss that. You've never met a person with skin on who wasn't made in the image of God. James was very key on how he said this because anytime you talk down somebody, maybe it's because of their wrong political affiliation, maybe it's because they're from another people than the people you're used to being with as a people, which by the way, you won't fit at grace long if you don't like people that aren't like your people. That being said, James said, out of the same mouth comes blessings and then comes curses at people made in the image of God. So I'm blessing God that I'm cursing people made in his image. And so blessing and cursing comes pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out, of both, bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or can a grapevine produce figs? No, and you cannot draw fresh water from a salty spring. If it's in your heart, it's going to come out of your mouth. So let me ask you, what are the words you've been using? The tongue gives us away. It reveals what's in our hearts. Jesus picks back up on this, Matthew 15. Listen to what he says here. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these make a man unclean. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what make a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. Ooh, this is not, Dr. Fauci wouldn't like this. <laughs> Je Jesus said, you COVID-19 people are really worried about the hands. I was at a place this week that had a sign in the public restroom that said, please, urgent, wash your hands for 20 seconds. Okay, thousand one, thousand two, th and we're all worried about our hands. And Jesus, who's the same today as he was yesterday, said, you people are all worried about having clean hands because you don't want to be a super spreader. And he said, you can eat with dirty hands. It's what's coming out of your mouth that's making you unclean. How about 20 seconds inventory on your words instead of those 20 seconds worried about my hands? Thank you. That's sweet. I feel like I'm at the British Open, that, that beautiful little golf clap there. The power of the tongue. You can break all Ten Commandments without moving an inch. You can murder somebody's reputation. You can lie. You can steal someone's integrity. You can, you can sit still and use this thing right here and break all ten. How do you know your heart's in trouble? What do you say when you're angry? What do you say about the opposite sex when your spouse isn't around? How do you, how do you describe people of the other political party? Are you always critical, always negative? Here's a suggestion. If you're married, ask your spouse. You got kids, ask them. They'll tell you. If so... If the words that come out of your mouth or through your thumbs on social media are always bashing, always mean, always criticizing, always negative, it might be a gauge on the dashboard telling you, you got a bad heart. We need to check your heart. Your words are saying your heart is not doing well. First gauge, the words that come out of my mouth indicate 
the well-being of my heart. Healthy people have healthy words. Good-hearted people have good-hearted words. Check your words. The second gauge, he says, is the heart of the heart is your affection. Your affection. Proverbs 4.25, he said, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix. Everybody say fix. Fix your gaze directly before you. Solomon tells us this, this is what a healthy heart looks like. If you want to protect your heart, because that's the wellspring of life, then you've got to watch your words, but you don't just watch your words. The other way you know the condition of your heart is by what are your affections and your passions. You've got to fix your eyes. To fix your eyes is to intentionally focus on something, someone, I am. It, I was 15 years old. I was in Shreveport, Louisiana, and three row, in a big coliseum at a national youth convention, and three rows down in the risers, I saw a girl. Her name was Melanie Palmer. Light shone, and I, I was smitten. I didn't know she was from Houston. That just proved there is a God. We finally had a break. During the break, I got to meet her. I, I, I've never said this wasn't like an opening line I used on women at age 15. I just, I just had never seen anyone like Melanie Palmer. And so I went to her and said, hi, I'm Scott. And you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. And, and I locked eyes on her at 15. And... and, and there was not another girl like her for me. Now, there's about 17 or 27 guys that came in and out of the picture in her world. But in my, I fixed, boom. And now here we are getting married at 20. Here we are 36 years later. I'm, I'm 56 years old. She's, she's 29 years old. And, 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 and I can just tell you, the way it works and you get the 36 years is because my eyes are still fixed. You know, are the stars out tonight? I can't tell if it's cloudy or bright because I only have eyes for you. Shoo up, shoo up. <laughs> Same thing with God. He said, fix your eyes on, set your affection on him. So God, is there anything else going on in the world? I can't see what's happening in political circles. I can't see what's happening around me because I only have eyes for you. Shoo up, shoo up. Set, everybody say set. Set your affection. You, you've got to, here, here's my question to you. If you want to know the condition of your, health, check, of your heart, check your words. But after that, what dominates your thoughts? What do you concentrate on the most? What do you think about first thing when you wake up in the morning? Is it the Benjamins or is it Jesus? What is the last thought you have when your head hits the pillow? Because we live in a world with countless things competing for our attention, wanting to capture our affection. And it's easy to set your eyes on the world around you or set your eyes on an issue. And you can let that issue become greater than the God who could handle the issue. And so you, you can be all social justice and we need social justice. But the answer is Jesus. Or you can set your eyes on, well, it's all about what's going to happen in November, and you can lock on that, or you can understand he is the one who sets rulers in place. Where have you set your affection? Fixing your eyes. Man, if Eve had kept her eyes straight and kept looking at God, she would have only experienced God's love and provision, and she'd have never experienced the forbidden fruit. If Lot's wife had kept her eyes ahead, she would have experienced merciful deliverance instead of becoming a salty statue of what happens when you turn to look the other way. If David had kept his eyes straight, he'd have never become a peeping Tom and an adulterer or a murderer because he had his eyes fixed on God. Hebrews 12, 2 says, let us fix, everybody say fix, 
fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That word fix in the Greek comes from a word, that it's the idea of concentrate your gaze. Concentrate your gaze. Man, when you're locked in, nothing more frustrating than having a conversation with somebody. And while you're talking, you see their eyes start to move. And you get the impression they're looking to see if there's a better opportunity for a better conversation. Oh, someone back here knows what I'm talking about. None of you know what I'm talking about. It only happens to me. And while you're talking, you see them going, yeah. Oh, that's, that's interesting. And you can see, are you looking? And yet we do that with God. God, I love you. You are my one and only. What else is bass boat? Ooh. God, I, I, yeah, keep talking. I'm, oh, wow. Look at that. Everybody say fix. fix. The way you know your heart's okay is where you have fixed your affections. Fix your affection. It means I am looking away from everything else. So you, we know your life moves in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. In a race, the coach will emphasize to his runners when that gun sounds, you don't watch the other runners. You don't look to the bleachers to wave at mom. You're not paying, you're not even looking behind to see where the other runners are. You got one thing in your focus, the finish line. You're working to the finish line. My question this morning morning is are your eyes fixed on Jesus or are you concerned about building wealth making a name for yourself or finding Mr. or Mrs. Right has the hobby now become an obsession is your life dominated by a habit that is taking the place of a relationship with Jesus I'm not trying to meddle I'm trying to get you to check your gauges and guard your heart the wellspring of life comes from here That's two gauges. He, he, he just said, watch your words. See where your affection is fixed. And then the third thing, he, he says, it's the general direction of your life. In other words, I'm, this, is, this is just in life in general. We, we get to going so quickly. I mean, isn't life crazy how the pace we live at is just nuts and you can get so caught up in the pace that we don't ever stop to assess where we are so some of us are making excellent time but we just don't know where we're going now I, I, I mentioned Melanie my eyes are fixed only on her shoop shoop but here's a funny thing in this season of our life that I get tickled about is Unless we're at a Target or Walmart, it doesn't matter where we are in the nation. If it's a Target or Walmart, she knows where everything is. It's, we'll walk in. We were in Oregon, and she walked in and said, okay, it's going to be down this side. I'm like, how do you know? You don't know how much gas we got in the car, but you know. How do you know? But the funny thing, she did it yesterday. She did it yesterday. We, we laughed about it yesterday. Her, her new thing is we just got to get there. We can walk off an airplane, and she just take the lead, and she's just walking, <laughs> walking down that terminal, and baggage claims the other way, but she's just, she's making great time. Just, I mean, just those little legs are moving, and I'm just, just like, <laughs> yesterday she walked out of a store, uh, Savannah and I were waiting out in the drive, and she just turned and was just walking so far away from the car, and we're like, hey, oh, hey. But she's always making good time. <laughs> you know, there's a reason why at amusement parks and malls, every so often you'll see the big thing. It's a map, and you walk up to it, and it's the first thing you do, Steve, you know this, the first thing you got to do is see where it says, you are here. <laughs> Here's a question. If we were to ask you that today, where are you? Could you say, I are here? 
first question God ever asked man. Where are you? He, he knew. It was a rhetorical question. He was asking, do you know? Because you're making great time. I mean, you've learned to sew. You're now fashion designers with the fig leaf things. You have, I mean, well done on progress. Do you know where you are? I'm talking to some people, this rat race. You know the downside, if you win it, you're still a rat. And we get caught up in this pace, and we don't ever stop to assess, where am I? The general direction of your life. Proverbs 4, 26, he, you know, he said, guard your heart, watch your words, set your affection. Then he said, mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. What direction are you going? Every path leads somewhere. But is that where you're supposed to be? If you continue on the path you're on, what's your final destination? There, there's someone here. You're, you're, you're toying with an idea that could blow up your marriage, your home. It'll rock your kids. And, and you're just leaning that way. You haven't done anything yet, but you're leaning. Leaning leads to drifting. Have you stopped to see where you are? He said, set a path. Stay on the path. Stay intentional. There is a path that leads to life. There's a path that leads to destruction. And the decisions you make and the actions you take determine which path you are on. And we're told, give very careful thought to your path. So if life is a highway, and it is, it's the direction you're driving, your vehicle, your family. Your, where are you headed? Matthew 7, 13, Jesus said, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult and only a few find it. On the road to life, just like what happens driving in Houston, highway hypnosis can take over. You know what that is. That's when you leave work, you get home, and then maybe you have a moment of thinking, I don't remember any of that trip. I kind of zoned into what I, I just, I missed the, that's called highway hypnosis. And that can happen. Another thing that can happen, it's, it's amazing, is if you just relax your hand on the wheel, the vehicle has a tendency. It may want to drift left or drift. It's just a subtle drift. And a drift on its own is not that bad, except if you don't correct it, eventually you will hit something. So you've got to watch for the drift. And you've got to be careful of highway hypnosis. And here's a hint Jesus just gave it, is if you're on a highway and you're saying, man, we are rocking and rolling, and look, everybody's going this way, it is highly likely you're on the wrong path. Oh, I'm making great time. Yes, and it ends in destruction. Here's how you know you're on the right road. It's narrow. It's got turns, stops, and yields. It's not the beltway. It's not a highway. It's narrow. And you have to find it. But it's worth it. It's all about the destination. It's where you're going. And we have got to observe our whole lives and the direction of our lives. And we've got to ask, if I continue in the path I'm on, where will I be in five years? Am I growing or am I just growing older? Jesus said in that passage, if you're going the direction of the majority, most likely you're on the wrong path. 
Examine your words. Examine your affections. Examine your direction. What path am I headed on? Simple, simple message from the wisest man who ever lived saying if you're going to guard your heart, check your words, check your direction, check your affection. Where am I headed? Where am I going? What's paramount in my life? Because everything flows from the heart. Everything I have to defend it. I have to guard it. I have to examine it because it can fool me. It can deceive me. Oh, man, I, the list is too long of good men and women of grace, young people of grace who said, but in my heart I thought, and then disaster. David was right. Search me, God. Know my heart. For some of us, our gauges are off a little. We've adjusted. <laughs> pastor Clint Sylvester, our Liberty Campus pastor, you know, we, we all share the same messages live, different voices, same message. And, and on this message for today, he said he took his car to a mechanic because he had a flashing light. It kept saying service engine, service engine, service engine. And I don't know what mechanic he went to. Whoever the mechanic was, the mechanic kept trying to fix it and finally said, look, here's what I think we ought to do. We should get some black duct tape and cover the light. You know, on a day like, I'm thinking, I'm going to get another mechanic. <laughs> if your remedy is ignore the blinking light with duct tape. But some of us here, we got so much duct tape on our lives. Our gauges are flashing and, and it's warning us. And we're just like, but I'm making good time. I'm making good time. And we just, and we have just duct taped over issues of the heart, and I'm telling you, there is a better way. Watch your drift, watch your words, watch your affections, and more than that, pay attention to the gauges. And then there's some here that would say, you know what, it's not that my gauges are off, not a little bit, I'm jacked up. I have a bad heart. If you were to lift the hood on my life, you would see it is a hot mess, and I don't think it's salvageable. I've got some great news for you this morning. God is not interested in duct taping or patchworking your heart. God is not interested in bypassing anything with your heart. God has a better plan. Ezekiel 36, 26, God speaks and says, and I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Ladies and gentlemen, God does heart transplants. He takes out the wicked, deceitful, and he puts in a new heart. A new heart. That's why David was able to say, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. That's what God does. He never does anything halfway. He does it all the way. The creator is still creating and he creates new hearts. Today, July 17, 2022, is someone's day to mark it and say that was the day everything changed. My direction, my vocabulary, everything changed because he exchanged with me a new heart. How do I do that? It's Baptism Sunday. It's a perfect day. Scripture says that if you believe on the Lord and are baptized, you shall be saved. It's a perfect day to experience the old made new. Not refurbished, made new today. It's an interesting thing that when he chose salvation, he said you've got to believe in your heart and you have to confess with your mouth. Why? 
Why the confessing with your mouth? Maybe it's because James said the most unruly member of your body is the tongue. And, and he went on to say, if you can control or tame your tongue, you can control everything. Literally, James said, if you could control your tongue, you wouldn't have carbs issue. Because if you can control your tongue, you can control any other part of your body. That's what James said. That's his half-brother. He said that the tongue sets the direction. And so there's a reason why the tongue, out of it can come blessings or curses. And when it comes to salvation, he says, it's going to come out of your mouth. The most unruly member is going to declare, I'm not in control. Jesus is in control. I'm yielding it to him. And then baptism is where we are washed where we are cleansed, it's where the surgery is finalized, and, and I have died with Christ, I am raised a new life, I was buried, and now here I am, I've taken on the name of Jesus, and old is made new. This is what I want us to do. I want to ask our prayer team to come, because we're going to pray over needs, anyone who has needs. I'm asking our baptism team, who's in the aisles, to come down. Now, you may have come to Grace today and, and, and you know, you're like, hey, I, I didn't know it was baptism Sunday. That's okay. Last service, no one knew, and we had 22 people baptized in the 9 a.m. service. 22. Here's how it happens. You didn't come ready, but we came ready. We have dressing rooms. We have hair dryers, towels. We have swimming trunks. We have old made new t-shirts in every size. It'll fit whatever soul you brought with you. And we're ready for you. We are ready to mark this moment. You know, in the old, Melanie and I were talking the other day in the old days, my family did this. My grandparents, they had the family Bible. It wasn't this, it was the big family Bible. And in the front of it, they would record the date. You know, today was the day Donnie Baldwin saved and they put the date when the salvation happened. Someone, the family Bible gets July 17, 2022. This was the day. This was the day we changed the trajectory of the family tree. This is the day we stopped the generational curses. This is the day I had a heart transplant and I became a different person in Christ. This is the day. And it starts by believing, confessing, and baptism. I'd like to lead us all in a prayer to begin it, and then we'll give you a chance to respond, and then we'll give an invitation for prayers. I'm asking everyone here to join with me. If you're online, you can pray with me as well before Pastor Mike Acosta uh, takes it as your host. You can click and raise your hand and say, I am one choosing life, choosing Christ today. Pray with me right now, would you? Jesus, I need you. I am a sinner, and I cannot save myself. Forgive me, cleanse me, give me a new heart. Baptize me with your spirit and be my Lord and my Savior. From this day forward, I declare I am a child of God and a disciple of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. What a powerful word by Pastor Scott today. We're talking about gauges talking about checking your gauges and making sure that your life, your mind, your spirit, uh, your, your, your body is right. Um, you know, we, before the foundation of the earth, the Lord knew you. He had a plan and a purpose for your life. And if today was the day that you said that salvation prayer the first time or the first time that you ever really meant it, I want to encourage you. There's a, there's a button on your screen right now to raise your hand. Raise your hand and let us celebrate with you the greatest decision you've ever made in your entire life. Old made new. That's what my shirt says. That's what everybody's being baptized here at the Humble Campus and all of our campuses today. They're getting that shirt to represent the conviction in their decision to not only accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but to lay their old identity down and to pick up the identity of Jesus Christ. We're celebrating today at all of our campuses and let me encourage you, take the opportunity as you have uh, a chance to visit our humble Texas, Liberty, Texas, Tomball, Texas, or close to downtown Houston, Texas at our Garden Oaks campus, uh, come visit Grace, come see us. Or if you've been away for a while, we look forward to seeing you again. God bless you until we meet again next time.
May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his mercy and give you his peace. Receive that in Jesus' name. If you want prayer, keep on coming this way. If you want to be baptized, step out and go to the right. Guests, we'd love to meet you at the guest suite or welcome center.